Welcome back to the Gentleman's Gazette and our live stream where you can ask me anything around the topic of socks. And uh, today we also introduce our new line of silk socks in the colors burgundy, in green, in a lighter shade of dark blue, as well as navy. And uh, as we launch new products going forward, we'll always have these lives so you can ask all the questions that uh, you want to ask. And uh, maybe they'll sneak in some other questions too. We'd like to fill the hour. So I'll jump right in and go to your questions. Um, why are these formal socks colorful? Aren't formal socks supposed to be black? Well, typically silk socks, right? They're very thin. They're made on 280 needles. And because of the material of the silk, you get that kind of sheen and color change, which is kind of a two-tone effect that works really well with formal socks. So the traditional socks are black. But let's say you've put together your basic um, black tie outfit or your classic black tie outfit, and you just want to do something different, right? You're like, man, what about a burgundy cummerbund or a burgundy bow tie or maybe burgundy socks? It's just a way to add a color into this very monochromatic scheme and uh, make it pop without being garish, right? And uh, some other people like wearing silk socks, especially in warmer climates, because they're really thin and they're just very elegant and luxurious looking, especially if you have loafers, for example, or shoes where you can see the socks. You see immediately if it's silk or cotton simply because of the sheen. Um, Why aren't these socks 100% silk? Isn't all silk better than blends of silk and cotton? Well, if you look at the sock in its entirety, there are different parts, right? There's the heel, there's the toe, and there's the area on top. So on the heel and the toe, you want a bit more cotton in there just so it's a bit more stable and the sock will last longer. On top, we also had a bit of elastic in there just so they stay on top of your calf all day. If you have a silk sock that doesn't have enough elastic on top, which, trust me, I've had my fair share of those socks, eventually, as you dance throughout the night or you walk, they will slide down, which is something I hate, and therefore I don't want to happen that to our socks. Um, so, yes. So whenever you see a silk socks that are 100% silk, there's always an element that is not silk in it. It's just labeled like that. Um, does it really matter that these socks are made on machines with 280 needles? Are more needles actually better? So when you knit socks, you can have machines with a number of needles. Basically, the more needles your machines has, the finer the sock will be. Now, a finer sock will not last longer than a thicker sock. It's the opposite. A finer sock will wear out more quickly. But in order to make a sock on a machine with 280 needles, you need the right yarn. Because having yarns that are finer and thinner, but still strong, are more expensive than other yarns. Also, if you have more needles, you just get this much finer knit. So you end up with a thinner sock. And also the way the light reflects and changes is, is really important. For example, if you have cotton socks, right, and our shadow stripe socks, if you make those with a thicker yarn on a machine with fewer needles, you won't get this nice two-tone effect anymore. So yes, the number of, of needles matter. Is it better? It depends on what you want, right? If you want to look the part and have something that is really unique, then yes, 280 needles is better. If you want something that lasts longer and uh, doesn't wear out um, more quickly, then no, more needles is not good. You want fewer needles. If you like to not overheat on your legs, more needles is better because it makes a thinner sock and keeps you cooler. Aren't my socks going to be covered by my evening trousers? Why spend so much money on something that no one is going to see? Well. Especially since you know, when you wear these socks for black tie, and you don't just have to wear them for black tie, you can wear them with more casual outfits in the summer. I don't think they're great winter socks simply because they're thinner, and unless you're in a climate where it never gets really cold, I would not recommend wearing silk socks in the winter for everyday wear. 
That being said, when you have your, let's say, evening pumps, right, or you have your regular patent leather Oxfords, or even just maybe a whole cut black leather Oxford, there's always an area that is visible. And with a black tie and white tie affair, there's typically a kind of monochrome color palette of black and white, right? So if you add just one element that is framed by black shoes and black pants or midnight blue pants, it really pops. So we took great care in our color selection to not choose colors that are like cardinal red, right? Where it's like in your face red. No, we chose like a shade of burgundy that was darker. Same with the green, right? It's, it's a bottle green or the, the blue, right? We have that navy blue, midnight blue that works really well with midnight blue tuxedos. Um, or if you want a bit more pop, a little more color variation, you have the blue color. Um, can these socks also be worn for formal daytime events like morning wear or weddings? I mean, ultimately, right? You can wear whatever you want. If you think about, should I wear silk socks or can I wear silk socks? You're so far ahead of the average person in the street that yes, you absolutely can. Is it traditional to wear a green pair of socks with a morning coat ensemble for your wedding? No, it is not. Can you do it and can it look sophisticated? And uh, can you have fun with it? Absolutely. Um, can these socks also be worn for formal events? Oh, weddings, yes. I think for weddings it's cool. It could be like a wedding party thing, right, where you coordinate your socks with your pocket square, for example, right? And so it's kind of an inside trade. It's a gift you can give to your groomsmen and they can take it home. And every time they wear the socks, they think about you and your wedding. Um, can these socks be worn with non-formal attire? I mean, I'm wearing non-formal attire right now. This is kind of a, a linen blend pair of pants in a kind of Prince of Wales check pattern with kind of a, not quite chocolatey brown, but darker brown with kind of an oatmeal color. And I'm wearing it with a pair of brown um, loafers that were made for me by um, Wayman Bespoke. Um, thank you, Simon. Um, and yes, you can, you can, for example, try to coordinate it with your tie or your pocket square, or you can just leave it as a standalone item. And um, probably the most versatile colors are probably th that light blue. I think it's a really nice shade of blue. It has a nice color range. I personally love the bottle green. I think it's really cool. Um, burgundy, you know, most ties are burgundy, so it, it works really well if you want to combine it that way. Um, how did you decide on these particular colors? Well, we wanted to start somewhere, right? And there's lots of colors. You can have gold, yellow, orange. I just wanted colors that I would be comfortable wearing for a black tie event, for example, but also were versatile enough to wear on an everyday basis when I wanted to dress things up. I wanted to switch things up from my shadow stripe socks or my two-tone solids. Um, yeah, just to see, to have some fun. And these are classic colors that you know have been around in menswear for a long time. They're not gonna go out of style. And uh, again, 70% of all ties sold are probably some form of navy or red. So we got those colors covered. Blue is interesting because you can wear it with like a pair of seersuckers, for example, which are often blue and white or something else. And green has this more earthy kind of tone. Maybe we'll add some brown in the future or some, you know, purple, but we'll see. Um, what kind of accessories will look best with bottle green, burgundy, and light navy? Um, I mean, you can always play with things. Right here, I'm wearing a pair of green socks. My shirt has green stripes, my tie is green, and my jacket is green. Now, they're all different kind of shades of green, but if I walk down the street and you look at me, because my socks are so far away from my tie, you can't tell it is 100% the exact same shape. But you'll notice that there's contrast at the socks. Generally, I like to, when I put together my outfits, I like to pick up colors and have contrast colors. Right? In this case, this green contrasts nicely with this green. They both happen to be green. I could have chosen a brown jacket or a navy jacket, and the whole ensemble would have worked too. This is definitely more summery and more unusual. I guess I have to be careful with touching the jacket, otherwise there will be audio interference. So 
Sorry about that. But yes, that's basically how you combine things. And of course, there's always a safe way to combine things. You can also, which is, you know, the safe way is to, to choose like, oh, I have blue socks, I use a blue tie. If you want to take the next step, you can take a complementary color. And uh, we did a whole video on like colors and dressing, but you basically put up the color wheel and you look, oh, what's the complementary color of blue? Oh, would it look good with orange, for example? And then you can see if it's too bold for you or not. And you know, when you say orange, there, there's a lot of orange. There's like bright construction worker orange, or there is, you know, kind of very dark, matter silk, bronzy orange, for example, right? They're both oranges, but they're very different in the way they appear. Do socks come in different calf sizes? I have small feet, but large calves and want to know if they'll fit me. No, they do not. Because it's a knit, you know, it's rather flexible. Like if I take a sock, for example, like here, and you can see it's there, you know, you can, you can pull them quite a bit and, and, and you, you see that if you have really, really big calves, there might be an issue, but in that case, what I suggest is you just size up at the bottom and that's a, a personal thing, right? Some people like their socks to fit really snugly in a toe area. Personally, I'm not one of those people. I like my toes to be like free and have enough room to move around. So when in doubt, I always go one size up and uh, then I'll, I'll enjoy it. Sometimes, you know, some people don't like it when their socks come all the way up to the back of their knee. What you can do is you can fold it over. It's something Preston often does. Um, I like them up there, so I'm comfortable with that. But as you get a larger size, they will also get longer. Um, I guess if you really wanted a very special socks to, to accommodate your calf, you'd probably have to go with a custom run, which is of course much more expensive because you know, typically when you make these socks, some manufacturers are, oh, you have to have you know, at least 120 pairs per size and color combination. So I doubt you want to order that many. There may be others with lower minimums, but you have a development cost and you still have to make 18 pairs. So it's quite expensive to, to do that um, if you wanted to go that route. All right. Why are they slightly transparent? I'm not sure I like that look. I mean, I don't shave my legs. You know, I have this kind of I don't know, you call it Caucasian skin, maybe a hint of like olive, you know, my dad's from Brazil. So I have black hair on that type of skin and I don't see my hair through. Will you, when you look very closely, maybe feel like they're a bit sheer, then yes. But that's part of the elegant look of silk and having that really thin, sleek material, which is perfect for an evening occasion. So if you don't like that, yes, then don't get these socks. They're not for you. You'll probably appreciate that. In that same vein, sometimes there are people like, oh, your socks are not thick enough. Uh, yes, they aren't. We talk about that. We advertise that. If you want to buy thick socks, you can go to Walmart. You can go to Amazon. You can go to Hanes, whatever. You can find thick socks anywhere. Even when I look at, you know, some of our competitors, sometimes people are like, oh, there's this brand called Vitzel from Turkey and they sell the same socks for, you know, $10. And I'm like, well, I know how much our yarn costs, you know, our yarn costs more than that. And yes, I have those socks. I put them on. They're much, much thicker. You lose some of that color effect and they also slide down on my calves. So if you don't mind it, if you want a thicker socks, by all means, go for that. This is if you like a luxurious, fine product and uh, you want something special that you can't just find anywhere. Um, will you add more socks that feature clocks? I love this vintage feature. Um, maybe. Right now, I'm in the process of designing a lot more different socks. As you know, we always try to add something and keep it in stock and keep it around, right? We don't just have a collection where we bring a sock pattern, keep it for one season and then discard it. If we add stuff, the goal is to provide that to you for now, for now but also in 10 years from now. And so with the clocks, we have to look at the, the sales velocity numbers. I think a lot of people are not interested in them 
because they're not, they can't relate to them. So they're not our best sellers. And I'm looking into different things can go wrong. All right, sorry about the technical hiccup. Um, not quite sure what exactly happened, but uh, shout out to Graham here who uh, mans this live today. I think uh, together with Chris, we've put in quite a bit of work to make these live streams look really good. And I remember in the beginning, people were like, wow, is this live? This looks like the real thing. So yeah, 4K streaming and everything is not easy. So not sure what happened. I'm glad we're back. Thank you for staying with us. Uh, by the way, we have our, we have launched our new pair of silk socks that come in four colors. We have an introductory period, I think uh, for the rest of the week. So one week from now, they'll go to the regular price of $70. Right now they're $60. So if you're interested, um, now is the time to buy. Okay. Um, so I think, I'm not sure when I went off, but the short answer was, will we add more clocks? Maybe, not in the immediate future. We're also looking at other styles right now and decide how we want to expand our sock range. I think the plan would be to also add thicker socks and warmer socks for winter and for different styles like boot socks and just to have a complete range of socks. How do your socks compare to other brands like Mesh Set Rouge? Well, Mechaussette Rouge is an awesome store. They're in Paris. They have tons of socks. They, sh they sell a bunch of brands. So they really know socks. I think at Fort Belvedere, we have a much smaller selection of that. And I have, they very early on, they sent me, I think, socks from Gamarelli and, and, and others. And you know, I wore them, but I was like, well, they have shutter swipe socks, but not in the color combinations I would like to wear. And they were actually an early advertiser on the Gentleman's Gazette. So, you know, I, I like those folks. They're great and excellent in Paris. I'm going to check out their store. What we do with our socks is we design them from scratch, right? So we, we look at the yarns, we look at the sizing, we decide how tall they are, and then we decide, okay, who do we want these socks to fit, right? How do we want them to work? How much elastic do we need, right? How many double wraps are they good for? Which is a measurement where you kind of test the strength of fibers. And so, so all these things we, we design and then we create our socks. So I'm 100% uh, certain that Mechus et Rouge does not offer the exact same socks that we do because they're all uniquely designed, right? So the color, you know, if we have the shadow stripes, the ribs, how long they are, how they stand up, all that stuff, it's all defined by us. That being said, I don't think Michel Saint Rouge sells any bad socks. They're good quality socks. Um, we, I, I like to believe that, you know, we have different socks than they do. And uh, I suggest you just buy one of their pairs, buy one of our pairs and see what you like. Is there a really big difference between this for Belvedere socks and other good quality socks from Falke or Burlington? Um, the Burlington socks that I had all usually had some form of nylon or polyamide mixed into them. Um, Falke is a, is a big German sock manufacturer. They also have shadow stripe or that type of sock. Um, I think they use a different yarn. Um, 
So again, I suggest you just, you know, get one of their pair, get one of our pairs, and then you, you test them side by side. I usually do it where I wear, you know, on one foot I wear one sock, and then on the other I wear the other. And I can typically tell right away. For example, when we did our like, you know, $4 versus $40 sock video, I had this sock on from Amazon and it was noticeably hotter and warmer. Um, I used to buy, you know, before we had Fort Belvedere socks, I grew up in Germany. I, I bought some Falke socks, you know, and they had like the ones with the number collection. And they had a huge set of cashmere selection, but you know, they would slide down or get holes. Um, they also had shadow stripes. So yeah, I, I dry different socks. You know, there's, for example, also Gallo, Gallo socks. Um, they have a very nice product. Um, I think they're very well known in Italy as if you go to an airport, they have stores there, but they're priced higher than our socks. Um, yeah, so check things out and see what works for you. That being said, if you tell me that uh, Fitzel socks are the same as ours, I can tell you no, and I like ours a lot more, but you may not. Um, are silk socks historically accurate? What decade of menswear are they most prevalent? Well, I'm, I'm sad I don't have that picture here with me right now, but uh, there's actually a, a picture of um, the Duke of Edinburgh wearing, you know, white tie, and they would wear knee-long breeches and then high silk socks, knee-high silk socks, and uh, with opera pumps. Looked very elegant. So yes, historically, it's it's something that that men would wear, and I mean, you know, silk or all fine materials, a velvet, you know, ermine fur. It was always associated with with royalty. And, and people who could afford it. And if you go back, you can see men were dressed much more colorfully than they are today. And we talk about how Bo Brummel influenced that and, and all that stuff. So we got the videos already. I'm not gonna regurgitate the entire story here. Um, are your socks made entirely by machine or is there handwork involved? So, you know, for the longest time, you had these sock machines and I've, I've seen quite a few sock factories and then they would basically be taken off and someone would link the toe area by hand. There was a way to do it by machine, but the machine was rather bulky. And so when you were wearing them and you had maybe a tight shoe, you could really feel it and it would be uncomfortable. Now, the latest machines, they can link the toes by machine and in a blind test, I found them to be indistinguishable. So the manufacturers we work with, they have both machines. But in my book, if there is no difference between the hand link and the machine link, and they, the, the outcome is exactly the same, I'm, I'm fine with both. Now they all undergo you know, a, a quality check by hand, and then you, know, you attach stuff. But um, yes, th these are knit by machine. You cannot knit a silk sock with 280 needles, uh, yeah. Trying to do this by hand, I mean, I don't think it's possible. Probably with the loop, and but I, I don't think it's possible. Steve K. Top for socks recommended for strictly business. Don't have many striped suits, so was thinking solely shadow stripes. Hmm, I don't understand the Steve K. Top. I don't know what the question is, to be honest. Um, when you, probably what he's asking, if you have a striped suit, should you wear sh striped socks? It depends, it's all a matter of scale, right? Let's say I have this wide of a stripe of a suit. Uh, yes, do you wanna wear something that's very similar to that in stripe? Probably not, otherwise it's, it's confusing, right? If, if my tie had the same stripe as my shirt, Maybe it looks a bit off. It's a very fine stripe and it's different enough in scale. It's probably doable. Um, have I worn a pair of shadow stripe socks with maybe a you know pinstripe or chalk stripe before? Yes, but it depends on the spacing of the stripe on the suit. I like it to be different enough that it doesn't look odd. For example, with a seer socker and then the shadow stripe socks, I prefer like a two-tone solid or a silk sock instead. Longer socks typically irritate my leg hair. Is this because of the material? Would silk negate this irritation? It's a good question. I, 
I think, you know, we all have different levels of sensitivity, right? So my six-year-old daughter, you know, she doesn't like the tags in her clothes. I never noticed those tags. Uh, m my wife is much more sensitive to, to a lot of things, and it's just who she is. So you just have to understand who you are. Are you, you know, more sensitive than others? And would the silk be different? Like, I don't notice. I'm wearing these socks here right now. And uh, I mean, I feel them a little bit on the elastic here, but I don't notice anything on my leg hair. I don't find it irritating at all. I don't think about it. For you, that may be different. If you say you're generally irritated, my guess would be that you're just a bit more sensitive. Um, and in that case, yes, a lighter material that is smoother on your skin will probably irritate you the least, but will it not irritate you? I don't know. Probably have to try it. How breathable are these socks? Now, they're not performance socks, right? I'm not going to wear these socks to go for a run or for a bike ride. Sometimes we get these things where people are like, oh, I bought these online dress gloves and they're not warm and suited for winter. Yes, that's not their purpose, right? If you go skiing, get skiing gloves. Don't get uh, peccary gloves that are hand sewn. Makes no sense. Now, these socks, how breathable are they? I would say silk is not the most breathable material. It has some insulating properties. And for that reason, for example, I don't um, necessarily like it for jacket linings, right? Sometimes people are, think of jacket linings as being very luxurious and silk being the most luxurious options. And it's fine. I have silk jackets. It's nice. It looks nice. But um, I'd probably go with Bemberg instead. So if, if you're concerned about your utmost breathability, I'd say look at our two-tone socks um, that are have that white element in it. It's a different fiber. I'm blanking right now on the name, but it's much more moisture transferring and it's more open in the weave. So these will be more breathable, so to speak. Um, some people also like cotton because cotton absorbs moisture in a different way. But um, yeah, overall, because they're thin, they're more comfortable to wear and more breathable than most socks you will likely have. What size of socks would fit a men's seven and a half shoe? Well, you know, seven and a half is, is it UK? Is it US? I suggest you check out the size chart on our website that tells you exactly based on your shoe size and you know, European and everything. So you find exactly the right size for your sock. But then, as I mentioned before, it also depends on if you like your socks really tight or really loose. So if you're in between, I always go up, other people go down. That's a personal preference thing. Any plans to introduce silk socks with patterns, window panes, clocks, etc.? Um, I've played with that idea. When you do the 280 needles, they currently cannot do things like clocks, for example. It's just not possible to do with that machine. We probably have to go to 240 needles and then play with the silk and add that in. I think we, we may do that. We'll see how these sell, you know, how, how people like them. We're always open to hear about your feedback and what you think. And we always want to learn and expand and offer things that, that make sense, right? So I could see us doing some form of patterns. It's, it's possible, but right now we, we don't have that. Um, yeah, if you just join a little later, uh, we are talking about socks today because we launched our four new colors of silk socks in bottle green, burgundy, uh, navy, and a darker blue with some lighter specks, which is really nice. Um, they're on sale uh, for a week, normally $70 a pair, now $60. You, there's also an additional discount if you buy more pairs. So if you're thinking about them, now is the time to buy. And uh, yeah, that's basically what uh, we, we have in store for now. Someone also asked, my cashmere socks and accidentally got machine washed. Any tips on making them soft again? Well, you know, I've machine washed cashmere socks and they're still soft. What I've found is what, what can happen is that they shrink, right? So that's a bigger issue than you have to 
to pull them. Typically I've found when you have a fiber or even a leather and it gets wet and the first time it comes out, it feels a lot more crunchy and not as nice anymore. I would actually just start wearing them and see what, what happens. Um, yeah, cashmere socks I would normally not machine wash, I would hand wash them, but I can see how that can happen. When I started out, I thought of cashmere socks as being like the holy grail of socks. But then I realized, you know, they're actually quite warm. So when you wear them on your feet, I felt it was almost like too much. And it wasn't as absorbent as cotton. And then they were more prone to sliding down. And so like, yeah. Then I had like, you know, some silk wool blends that were also really soft, but they held up better. So it could be something that we play with. But cashmere socks are also really, really expensive. So it's, it's definitely a, you know, high-end luxury. So is there, we could try it and, and give it a shot to see if it's, there's enough demand for that kind of a sock. Um, yeah. Um, okay. It seems like there's some other questions and some stuff about um, the Belvedere Bash. Uh, if you haven't heard it, we'll have an event on October 27th and 28th. We'll have, you know, different opportunities to dress up. Uh, Preston will sing. There's like a black tie and white tie gala, so you can really dress up. We'll take nice pictures. So it's really a fun way to dress up and highlight your silk socks or whatever it is that represents your personal style. Um, do we have any VIP tickets left? No. Um, we sold those, I think. Uh, uh, before the first weekend was over, after we launched. So they're no longer available. We have regular tickets available, and uh, you can find more about that on our website. I think uh, you should see a link probably in our description or as a card. Um, what kind of workshops will there be at the event? We're putting them together right now. We're still selling tickets, and we want to get a good idea of how many people are coming. It will be things that are usually hard to do in person, right? We'll probably do something on leather, right? That you can touch and feel and scratch and rip and just get a better understanding of, hey, what is vetch tan? What is cordovan, you know? What is, and how are they different? And what are the pros and what are the cons? And what are maybe the myths? Stuff like that, right? Or scents, like have different colognes, be able to smell things and, and understand, aha, this is this. It's hard to purvey that here. Maybe we'll talk about fabrics. Um, will there be a tailor who will teach us about suit construction materials and limits? Um, I don't know yet. There, the sad thing is there is no local like bespoke tailor in Minneapolis, right? There's people who do made to measure and there'll be some people who do that. Um, there'll be in the audience, you know, we're not promoting that. We currently don't sell made to measure. We've been thinking about it. We could offer that type of thing, but it's an entirely different business model. It requires a lot of work. So I'm not saying we're never going to do that. It's just not something we're tackling right now. We have lots of other things that we're focusing on in terms of product that I'm very excited about, you know, leather goods. And uh, so stay tuned. There's a lot more to come this year and next. But um, we have, for example, I think Amar Hark Weber is going to join us. She's a bespoke shoemaker. So she can talk a lot about shoes, how they're made, the leathers, and that'll be cool. Um, can you explain more about the itinerary for the Belvedere Bash? What can I expect at the event? I think I mentioned a few things. It's really a way to connect with people. Um, we're at a cool venue. It's called the Minneapolis Club. You know, there's lots of cool old uh, wood panels and, and just good backdrops for, for photos. For a full kind of itinerary, um, check out the website, you know, we'll update as we get closer to the event. So we're working on it. I think we're like uh, about two months out, eight weeks. So we're working on it. We're excited about it. We're also bringing in probably a few, you know, people that I know, other influencers, friends in that space. So you're not only going to meet the Gentleman's Gazette team, but you also meet some other people. So we'll see how it all shapes up and who comes. We'll probably, you know, announce if there's some like well-known people that will attend. So watch out on social media over the next um, eight weeks. What sort of clothing will you be wearing to the cocktail evening? I'm looking for inspiration. Frankly, you know, I haven't thought about it. 
I'm not a person who plans um, his outfits like months in advance. So I'll see what I have for them, what I feel like that day. I'll probably have something that's a little bolder, um, but not too bold, right? I'm not going to wear a sequins jacket or anything like that, but uh, maybe a velvet dinner jacket or maybe one of the more unusual dinner jackets. I'll probably wear a pair of, you know, Ford Belvedere silk socks, maybe in bottle green or burgundy. I have to see what I, I have and what I feel like. Um, I don't have a black tie or a white tie ensemble, but would love to attend the gala. Can I come in my most formal suit? Yes, you can, right? This is not about judging people and saying, oh, you, you don't have a tuxedo, out of my sight. No. It, the idea is that most people don't have a chance to wear their tuxedo often enough, and so maybe they don't buy it because they feel like, ah, oh, I can never wear it again. Well, I have tuxedos. I want to wear them more often, so this is the perfect opportunity to do that. But if you don't have one, wear whatever works for you. Um, we have a guy in like cocktail attire, for example, so yeah, it's a dark suit. You know, if you feel like you want to wear a pink suit, that is your choice. You know, I'm not, I'm not gonna, uh, obviously everyone will come up to you and talk to you and, and try to understand why you're wearing this pink suit tonight. But if that's your take on black tie, that, that's you. Um, will I get to spend time with all of the gentlemen of the team? Yes, we'll, we'll all be there. Uh, I think the only person who's not going to be there is Nathan, because Nathan is no longer with us, but because of our long production cycle for videos, you may still see a video pop up from Nathan, you know, that we filmed before he resigned. Um, yeah, he just wanted a, a change in his career and, um, you know, he had familial circumstances and changes, but we're, you know, we parted ways on, on good terms and uh, no ill will against Nathan. But I can't, you know, say, hey, show up to this event, right? It's up to him. If he wants to come, he's welcome to, but uh, I can't make him. Um, it, okay, looks like an awesome event. What can I do in Minneapolis menswear related? Frankly, no, at these kind of type of events, part of the benefit is meeting other people, right? Meeting other like-minded people who really enjoy what you do. We'll share all the local addresses of places you can go, right? Where it's like a cigar lounge or, you know, made to measure or clothing establishment so you can check them out. Minneapolis is not Milan, but there are some cool stores that have gained, you know, nationwide recognition with cool interior design. There's a, a great slew of like bars with, you know, NA cocktails, regular cocktails. There's like speak easies. And truly, you know, if you're out and about with a, a group of, of well-dressed people, it's fun, people notice, and you, you'll have a good time and you'll be able to, to learn things. You'll also get to interact with people and um, it's gonna be more of an, you know, intimate event, right? We're gonna cap it at 100. Um, I could see us even having fewer people too. So we're not, you know, pushing this event hardcore. This is not like this money maker for us. It's, it's just an event that we want to have, you know, good customers and, and classic style enthusiasts come together, you know, get inspired by one another, learn from each other and have a good time and dress up, of course. Um, what is the weather typically like in Minneapolis for late October? Should I bring a light raincoat or heavier overcoat? Frankly, you know, um, Teresa and I, we got married in October, mid-October, and it was a beautiful day. You know, it was probably 60 degrees Fahrenheit, you know, like 16 degrees Celsius. It can snow in October or it can be, you know, 80 degrees. It's a wide range, so I would look at the weather report just before you come. And when in doubt, you know, bring a little more if you can, if you can check it back. And uh, so you're just covered. But typically the, the weather forecast is quite accurate, all right? It may not rain when it says it rains or the other way around, but temperature-wise it's usually pretty accurate. Do you have a Facebook group or event page for the Belvedere Bash that I can check out? Yes, we do have both. Um, so once you sign up for a ticket, there is a Facebook group where you can interact with people beforehand. We'll try to, you know, have some 
get to know and, and engage with people so you can kind of know who you're going to meet or you're going to be excited to meet that person that you, you know, converse with before the event. Um, because I think, you know, sometimes when you're living maybe in a small town or in a community where people don't dress up, right? They're like, hey, why do you dress up? You know, are you going to a funeral? Or do you think you're better than us? Well, coming to the Belvedere Bash is a very different experience, right? This is a place where there are people like you. They like to dress up. They don't judge you for dressing up, but they find it inspiring. They find it cool. They want to learn more about your outfit and they want to empower you. And having that community can feel really exhilarating. And so, you know, when you're in that mindset with like-minded people, great things usually happen. And for example, now I remember, um, you know Kyle, right? Kyle was, you know, interested in menswear. He was not a content creator, but he came to Menfluential. It was a conference put on by Antonio Centeno and Aaron Marino in Atlanta. And, you know, he came there and we talked and uh, then he became a host, right? So you meet people there. I'm not saying if you come to the Belvedere Bash, you will have a job at a Gentleman's Gazette next year, but maybe that's an opportunity, right? Maybe we know each other, we're like, hey, we need someone because all the people in our staff, right, are people who are passionate about this. We, we don't, um, we don't want like front-facing people or people running the content who just use JetGPT, you know, and copy other stuff. No, if, if you do something in the Gentleman's Gazette, you are truly interested in this, right? And, and Jack, for example, right, he's on our team. He's um, managing the Facebook groups, for example, our social channels and working on scripts and, and other stuff. But, you know, he, whenever I see him, he wears a tie probably more often than I do, right? Because he's like, this is what I love. If I bike my daughter to school, right, when it's hot outside, no, I'm not going to wear a tie because it doesn't suit my lifestyle in that moment. And, and being well-dressed doesn't mean to wear a tie all the time. But that's the kind of stuff that, yeah, we, we care about. And, and being there and being out there and knowing each other, yeah, who knows what, what will happen. What I do know is that if you don't put yourself out there, you can't even have an opportunity to make connections and, and, and get down that path. So sometimes, you know, you have to be at the right place at the right time. Um, is Highland formal dress acceptable attire for the bash? Absolutely. I was talking to um, Brian Sakaba from He Spoke Style, and he was like, man, I got this kilt made, you know, in Scotland, and I haven't worn it yet. And was like, yes, come wear it. I'm sure you'll enjoy it. He hasn't uh, RSVP'd yet, but I'll have to follow up with him after this. I hope he'll come. He's a great guy, and I'd love to have him at the bash. Um, recently, I had to get rid of a suit because it was worn out. What was the hardest piece of clothing you had to get rid of? Oh, that's a good one. Like, if you ask my wife, she'll say, oh, you never get rid of things, right? Because uh, I'm like, well, you know, if it's, maybe we'll need it again for some video. Or sometimes it's also like you need a good illustration for a don't, right? So even if I never wear it, I still want it around to film it when we don't want it, so to speak. Um, that being said, there was a cool pair of um, linen trousers that I bought from Karacheni. It was like a heavy kind of dark bluish linen and I wore them a lot until they kind of wore out. And my pants typically wear out in the crotch area because I have bigger thighs. And so that's just the kind of weak spot. And so, yeah, I was, I was very sad when they wore out. I still have them, though, because I'm like, well, if I want to use this fabric and if I want to weave a custom fabric that is like that, I have it in my archive. Um, I'm about to start wearing corduroy again. Will the Fort Belvedere Corduroy be released for fall? Yes. So one of our next big launches is um, corduroy trousers. And we, did a, we put a lot of work into this project in from getting the fabric right and getting the cut. It's a very classic cut. It will be a full cut. 
it will be true high rise. So it's none of this low rise or mid rise. Or sometimes they call it high rise. I put it on. It's like this more of a mid rise. It's more like a 1930s inspired high rise with a full cut. But we also didn't want it to be a 1930s reenactment type of pants. So we slimmed down the hem. And um, yeah, I'm testing lots of different pants right now. The one I'm wearing here right now is a different cut. This is a single pleated model in a different summery fabric. So we're getting them all right. The corduroys will be flat front, um, simply because we found that with the ridges of the corduroy, if you have the pleats, it doesn't look as nice as if you have the flat front. And we cut them in a way that there will be no issue in terms of fitting into them. Because normally I can never wear flat front pants because they just never fit. Um, but yeah, we will launch those um, this fall probably around the bash, either before or after, so stay tuned. How can I know if a shoe is Goodyear welted? Well, there's many ways, right? One is it's probably going to be a little stiffer and you can take the shoe and sometimes you can look at the sole and you see the stitching through it, right? It can be Blake stitched, it can be, it can be Goodyear welted. Um, the first good thing is to just check out the manufacturer's website, see what kind of shoes they offer. And then sometimes if they offer different ranges, we got a video that shows you all the different construction methods and what to look for exactly. Um, will your trousers have side adjusters and double pleats as an option on release? You know, we've looked at those and I think side adjusters make sense on a pair of pants that you know doesn't have belt loops. I don't like belt loops and side adjusters. I like side adjusters paired with other um, buttons. What we do is we try to say, okay, we have this fabric. What would be the perfect, most ideal trouser cut based on its you know level of formality, right? Based on the thickness, the warmth, the time of year you'd wear them. So we're currently working on four different cuts, you know, base styles, and then depending on the fabric, we will do one. What we did not do was to say, oh, let's say we have, you know, 10 different colors of corduroys in, you know, 10 different sizes each, and then in, you know, four different pants cuts. That would just be stock overkill. So what we try to do is we try to curate and say, we believe this cut is best with this fabric, for that reason, right? And then we, we launch that. Um, then, you know, down the line, we will do some maybe chinos or summer pants, right? And they will be different. So we will try to find the right style for the right thing. Again, this is not a made to measure thing. Maybe we'll go down that route, made to measure, made to order. And then of course you can, you know, choose the fabric, choose the style, choose all the details. But if that's what you truly want, you have to go down that route because just stocking all these different options is crazy expensive. It would require us to tie so much cash up in stock that you know we'd have to charge a much higher price for it. So it's it's a kind of a lose-lose proposition for everyone. I have a long torso and short legs. What can I do besides short overcoats to make my legs look longer? I purchased like four pairs of regular trousers before I realized my body type. Yeah, I have a long torso and short legs too. I'm like 6'1" and my inseam is under 31 inches. So I, I can relate to that. I think having a more high rise pair of pants visually elongates your leg line. That's definitely something you can do. Um, yeah, short overcoats, if you wear them, will elongate that too. I'd also make sure that the balance is right, that your jacket length is not too long because that can make your legs look shorter too. Um, yeah, I want to wear collar bars, but it's hard to find shirts with proper collars. Is there an alternative? Yeah, there's some stores that offer them, I think, that have, you know, the pinholes. We've been thinking about making them, but there's, you know, too many issues. We may get there eventually. We have no plans to launch it anytime this year or next year. Um, what you can do, though, is you can just get a collar clip which you can clip on any type of collar. And traditionally, you know, 
you needed a more classic color with a very moderate or no spread. What we've did recently, we added a larger size with a stronger coil so more people can wear it even with shirts that they already have in their rotation. That being said, you can't wear it with a widespread color. It, it just wasn't designed for that because the bar would have to be extremely long. But um, yeah, check out our listings. We have them there. We should probably do a new video in highlighting how we wear them and have a little quiz finder to help people find the right thing. I have a green Swiss Army gray coat. What color of hat should I wear with it? Well, you know, if you have a pair of brown shoes, then you can wear a brown hat with it, right? Can you wear green with it? Yes, but I think it looks odd if it's the, not the exact same shade of green. So I would use something contrasting, something in the earth tone family. You know, shades of brown, taupe could work maybe, um, maybe even black, gray. Yeah, I, I think there's lots of options that, that you have there. What was Raphael's favorite European country that he traveled to? Um, you know, having grown up in Europe, I've seen most of Europe. I think I don't have one favorite country. I think there's many different countries that are great for different things, right? So I'm not uh, traveling to Serbia for their pizza, right? I like cabbage dishes. Or if you're like, I'm, I'm interested in, in their nice beaches, right? Or I, I, I like traveling to Italy for food or to France. I also go to England for food, but then I'm, you know, I like the Indian. I'm not a big fish and chips kind of guy. So, but uh, I, yeah, Italy is nice in terms of there's still lots of, you know, craftsmen and it's very charming. I think though, if you look at the accommodations like the you know average hotel or Airbnb Portugal is a lot nicer right there's also good food they also have good levels of craftsmanship so um, Spain is a great country that I think is often underrated they have wonderful food um, good weather lots of culture um, Germany is fantastic right if you're into classical music and uh, sausages I mean definitely check it out or if you're like hey I want to go to the Nürburgring and uh, you know, race the car. Well, gotta go to Germany, right? So, yeah, maybe you think about of doing a bucket list and what you care about, and then choose your favorite country. Um, what kind of drinks will be served at the bash? You know, there's be there there's gonna be water and, and soft drinks. There'll be cocktails and and a cocktails. Um, is it like you know? the uh, most elaborate cocktail offering there is? No. There are other bars in Minneapolis that offer that. This is kind of an event venue center and they have certain limitations. But the drinks that I've seen, the menu that I've tried, they're all good. They have a restaurant in-house too, so it's, it's good stuff. Um, is Highland a formal dress acceptable? Yes. Come to the bash in your Highland dress. I'd love to see it. Um, I think it would be wonderful. I tend to wear fedoras, but I'm hunting for a bowler hat. Any suggestions on where to find them? The biggest thing to keep in mind that with a bowler hat, it's a much stiffer hat, uh, more similar to a top hat. And back in the day, you would use a tool called a conformateur. It would be like, yeah, a thing that looked a bit like a hat with lots of cylinders, and it had a little piece of paper on top, and it would kind of define what shape you had. Because for a fedora hat, which is a soft felt hat, you can have maybe a size, you know, seven and a half or sixty, whatever it is. And as you put the hat on, it adapts. With a bowler hat, it's important to know: do I have a long oval hat or not? And then, um, yeah, we have a video on bowler hats. I suggest you check that out because the modern bowler hats often don't have that beautiful brim edge curl that vintage bowlers have. So I, if I wear a bowler hat, I want a nice brim curl. I don't want the modern ones without the brim curl. So, and then it has to fit my long oval head. So it's say figure out that head shape and then decide if you want new or not. And then, you know, there's places like eBay or their, their vintage vendors 
that uh, specialize in certain head shapes. And you can certainly find some. There's also new old stock hats, which is best, of course. Or you try to get a new one made with a hat maker exactly to your specifications, but that will, that will cost you more. Would you sell white cotton chinos? Um, maybe like, you know, ever so slightly off-white. I think it can be a really nice color. As a chino fabric, I mean, maybe. As we did prototypes, you know, we had lots of different fabrics just to see how do they wear. Um, are they kind of suited for this cut? How do they drape? We also look at things like, you know, how easy are they to wash? Can I take them out of the wash and do I have to iron them every time? Or could I, you know, take them out of the wash and wear them and still be okay? Um, so never say never. I, I could see it. It's probably not the first pair of pants that we'll offer. Um, Raphael, how can I make creases and pleats in my pants last longer? I watch your wits. I have a clapper, but the creases only hold for one or two wears. Yes. That's just ultimately something that you'll have to live with. Um, I know my friend uh, Herbert Stricker, he'd said that his father would always come home during lunch to have lunch and he would recrease and re iron his pants. So, given that your creases last one to two wears, that's pretty good. I think you know you could experiment with some like starch spray right, as you iron it in with a clapper um, to see what that does. But I'd probably try that first on some cotton pants and then take a look at it. I've also found that the kind of material you have matters and the kind of iron you have matters, right? If you have a really heavy kind of old school iron that is, you know, 15 pounds heavy, the crease will be better than if you have a regular like Roventa or whatever iron that you buy in a regular store. So that can be something you could probably do. All right, well, thank you for being part of our live stream. Again, we have our Fort Belvedere silk socks in four colors, burgundy, bottle green, navy, and a blue. They're currently on sale um, for 60 bucks and 70 until the end of the week. There are more discounts if you buy them in volume. And uh, I look forward to seeing you for our next uh, live stream. Yeah, we'll have quite a few more product launches coming this year. So that means more live streams. So stay tuned for those. Thank you. Bye.